One, two, three. Today we're learning about oceanic life zones and primary productivity, in particular neuritic and oceanic zones. So the physical settings of the marine environments, the living biotic components include algae, fish, sponges, and bacteria. The non-living or abiotic components include water chemistry, light, salinity, pressure, density. The physical setting, the continental crust, is mostly granite. It's thicker and less dense than the oceanic crust. The oceanic crust is mostly basalt. It's thinner and more dense, so it usually sinks below the continents. The continental shelf is a relatively shallow part of the seafloor that adjoins the continents. The continental slope is the area where the seafloor drops steeply at the outer edge of the continental shelf. And the continental rise is the accumulation of mudslide sediments at the base of a slope. A life zone is a region that char contains characteristic organisms that interact with one another in their environment. The majority of the life in the ocean occurs near the coastlines in relatively shallow areas above the continental shelf. Why do you think this is? Well, it's mainly because of an increased amount of light, which increases nutrients and oxygen levels. Ocean life zones are based on differences in physical conditions, such as light, salinity, moisture, pressure, and temperature. The different zones for light include the photic zone, the part of the ocean where light penetrates, that's up to 200 meters deep. The dysphotic zone, around 200 meters, it receives 1% or less of sunlight. And the aphotic zone, below 200 meters, relieves no sunlight, receives no sunlight, and is always dark. Pelagic zones. The pelagic zones is the open ocean from areas above the continental shelf out to the deepest part of the ocean. The pelagic zone is divided into two subsections called neuritic and oceanic. The neuritic zone is the area of shallow oceans less than 200 meters deep past the intertidal zone and above the continental shelf. The oceanic zone is the deeper parts of the ocean more than 200 meters deep beyond the neuritic zone. The neuritic zone receives plenty of nutrients from rivers emptying into the ocean near the coastlines and the mixing caused by currents and tides. Um, pause. One, two, Three, the neuritic zone really, pause. One, two, three. The neuritic zone rece receives plenty of nutrients from rivers emptying into the ocean near coastlines and then mixing caused by tides and currents. Sunlight is able to penetrate through the neuritic zone leading to a very productive ecosystem with algae, phytoplankton, and marine plants serving as the base of the food web. Most deep sea fishing actually occurs in the neuritic zone, where waters are less than 200 meters deep. Most of the world's commercial fishing takes place here. The upper part of the oceanic zone receives light, whereas the lower part, most of the ocean, is in darkness. Although there are a few communities of organisms in the aphotic zone, Numerous life forms, such as fish, worms, squids, and crustaceans, have been observed and photographed in the great depths of the ocean. Deep sea organisms are specifically adapted to live in the depths of the aphotic zone. Some of their adaptations, body color. This is often used by animals everywhere for camouflage and protection from predators. In the deep sea, animals' bodies are often transparent, such as many jellies and squids, black, such as black smeltfish, or even red, such as many shrimp and other squids. The absence of red light at these depths keeps them concealed from predators and prey. 
Some mesopelagic fish, such as hatchetfish and silver, silverly sides, pause, one, two, three. Some deep sea adaptations include body color. This is often used by animals everywhere for camouflage and protection from predators. In the deep sea, animals' bodies are often transparent, like many jellies and squids, black, such as the black smeltfish, or even red, such as many shrimp and other squids. The absence of red light at these depths keeps them concealed from both predators and prey. Some mesopelagic fish, such as the hatchetfish, have silvery sides that reflect the, the faint sunlight, making them hard to see. And reproduction. Consider how hard it must be to find a mate in the vast, dark depths. For most deep sea spe species, we do not know how they achieve this. Deep sea anglerfish may use such light patterns as well as scent to find mates, but they also have another interesting reproductive adaptation. Males are tiny in comparison to females and attach themselves to their mate using hooked teeth, establishing a parasite-like relationship for life. The blood vessels of the male emerge with the females so that he receives some nourishment from her. In exchange, the female is provided with very reliable sperm source, avoiding the problem of having to locate a new mate every breeding cycle. Another is gigantism. It's a possible adaptation that's not physically fully understood, but it's called deep sea gigantism. This tendency for certain types of animals to become truly enormous in size. A well-known example is the giant squid, but there are many others such as the colossal squid, the giant isopod, the king of herrings or fish, which may be the source of sea serpent legends, by the way, um, and the recently captured giant amphipod from 7,000 meters in the Kermadec Trench near New Zealand. While the giant tube worms of the hydrothermal vents grow well due to abundant energy supplies, the other gigantic animals live in food-poor habitats, and it is not known how they achieve such growth. It may be simply the result of a feature that we'll examine next, long lives. Long lives, yes, is an adaptation. Many deep sea organisms, including the gigantic, but also many smaller ones, have been found to live for decades or even centuries. Long-lived fish include the rat tails or the grenaders and the orange ruffy, which are a special concern as they are targets for deep sea fisheries. These species reproduce and grow to maturity very slowly such that the populations may take decades to recover, if at all, after being overfished. This has happened repeatedly to orange ruffy, a deep sea fish easily found congregating around sea mounts in the southern oceans. Once fisheries have wiped out one sea mount population, they simply move on to another sea mount. The deepest part of the ocean floor is called the ocean basin or the abyssal plain. The benthos, bottom-dwelling organisms that live in the ocean basin, are adapted to regions of very low temperatures and very high pressures. So open ocean life zones. Pelagic is the entire ocean of water past the intertidal zone. Neritic is the part of the pelagic zone directly above the continental shelf. Oceanic is a part of the pelagic zone past the shelf, deep ocean water, and benthic, the whole ocean floor. Note that benthic refers to any area of the ocean floor, so it is everywhere that the ocean is. Pelagic zones. The pelagic zone, pause, one, two, three. The pelagic zone is derived from the Greek word for pelagos, meaning open ocean. It is the name for oceanic water that is not in direct contact with the shore or the bottom. It is by far the largest aquatic biome in terms of volume, but in comparison to many of the other biomes, it is a desert. Pelagic subzones. The pelagic zone is further divided up into vertical subzones. 
as seen in the image on the screen. This biome vertical joins with the deep sea biome once the illuminated surface layers are passed. So epipelagic is the illuminated surface zone. The epipelagic zone stretches from the surface down to the depth where photosynthesis can no longer occur because of the limited light, usually around 200 meters. Since light is absorbed quickly with depth, only a small percentage of the sunlight ever reaches as far down. Since sunlight is needed for photosynthesis, nearly all primary production in the ocean occurs here. In fact, a great percentage of the oxygen in the atmosphere comes from the primary production out in the open oceans. As a result of this, the epipelagic zone is also where most pelagic animals are found, since they are often big. Tunas, sharks, and large marine mammals such as whales and dolphin travel in these waters. We also find planktonic jellyfish and comb jellies. The mesopelagic zone, which is the twilight zone. In the mesopelagic zone, there is no longer enough light for photosynthesis. The light that does penetrate can provide enough light for hunting if you have really good eyes. Many animals do vertical migrations down to the mesopelagic to hide during the day. With the darkness of night, it's safer again to migrate closer to the surface where there's generally more available food. Many creatures that live in this zone are also transparent, a good camouflage in this zone where there is barely enough light to see. Some animals here also have developed larger eyes to make use of the limited light. In addition to decreased light, oxygen concentrations are also very limited. So organisms that live down here have to be able to survive on low oxygen levels as well. Squids, nautilus shells, and swordfish are a few species that can be found down here. General depth of the mesopelagic zone is 2,000 to 1,000 meters. The photosynthetic organisms here are dominated by phytoplankton, diatoms, and dinoflagellates that have evolved special features to stay in the surface water and not sink. Pause. Return to mesopelagic zone. Mesopelagic, one, two, three. In the mesopelagic, pause, one, two, three. In the mesopelagic zone, there is no longer enough light for photosynthesis. The light that does penetrate provides enough light for hunting if you have really good eyes. Many animals do vertical migrations down to the mesopelagic to hide during the day. With the darkness of night, it is safer again to migrate closer to the surface where there is generally more available food. Many creatures that live in this zone are also transparent, a good camouflage in this zone where there is barely enough light to see. Some animals here have also developed larger eyes to make best use of the limited light. In addition to decreased light, oxygen concentrations are also very limited. So organisms that live down here have to be able to survive with low oxygen levels as well. Squids, nautilus shells, and swordfish are a few species that can be found down here. The general depth range of the mesopelagic zone is 200 to 1,000 meters. The bathypelagic zone, or the dark zone. Below the mesopelagic, no light will ever reach unless it comes from bioluminescence, organisms that can create their own light. The bathypelagic zone is defined as a zone that goes down past the continental slope. The pressure down here is great. Only organisms with special adaptations to survive such pressures can live in this deep. For example, the swim bladder that we see in many fish at the surface is missing in the fish down here. The food source here is limited to the debris of dead material that sink like snow from the above zones. Staying still to conserve energy is common. Some tr fish attract prey by going fishing. For example, the angler fish have a small glowing bioluminescent rod, rod attached to their head. Other fish get attracted to the light and become a meal for the angler fish. 
the water temperature stays fairly constant down here between 2 and 4 degrees Celsius, or about 35 to 39 degrees Fahrenheit. The general depth range of the bathypelagic zone is 1,000 to 4,000 meters. The abyssal pelagic zone is the bottomless zone. This zone pause back to abyssal pelagic one two three the abyssal pelagic zone or the bottomless zone this zone is usually where the continental slope levels off more than 30 percent of the bottom of the ocean is said to be situated here has a general depth range of about 4,000 to 6,000 meters. And then we have the Hadopelagic zone or the underworld. The origin of the word is from the Greek Hades, who is the name of the Greek god of the underworld. Some parts of the ocean floor have deep trenches that can reach several kilometers deeper than the surrounding ocean floor. These zones, which cover less than 2% of the ocean bottom, are referred to as Hadopelagic zones. A lot of these trenches are still unexplored, and so far only a few species have been observed here. Not many organisms down here would ever survive being brought up to the surface because of the incredible pressure and temperature difference on the way. Very little detritus falls as far down, so food is thought to be very limited to these organisms. The general depth of trenches in the hadropelagic zone are 6,000 to 11,000 meters. The deepest part of the ocean is a Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench, which is approximately 11,021 meters, or 36,160 feet.